Hey there, hope everything's going well. Tyler Brad here, friendly, as always. Wanted to talk about something exciting, generative AI, no code. Let's put it all together, have some fun. That is uh, this integration coming out. Uh, not even coming out, it's live. Zapier, Zapier, Zapier. Uh, a fantastic company, um, Works allows you to work with um, sort of product applications, like thousands and thousands of applications. Basically create connections and automations between uh, those platforms. Uh, many of us who are uh, non-coders, but somewhat technical, absolutely love this product. It makes us feel like a developer. We can hack all this stuff together, say if this, then do that, connect platforms that we were unable to connect. And it's shown in their growth. Uh, as of 2021, um, it's more than 4,000 applications on um, Zapier, and uh, they have over 100,000 customers, $140 million in revenue, and a fantastic story around the idea uh, of bootstrapping. So um, they've released this um, OpenAI um, uh, integration. Uh, we can see it here. Uh, you can do more with OpenAI. OpenAI, I mean, generally, if you're watching this video, you probably have some familiarity with them, but it's an artificial intelligence research laboratory. Uh, and um, they are just releasing AI sort of advancements, a lot of them around sort of large language models uh, at crazy speed. Um, and one of those is GPT, which is allowing you to do uh, text generation, um, as well as analysis and sort of a you know a summarization and ton of things when you're interacting with text data, it also uh, is doing uh, image generation um, through a system called Dali. And both of these, uh, which is it's, it's awesome, um, is uh, are now available in Zapier. So you can all of a sudden connect 4,000 plus applications with. Um, open AI. And to me, it speaks to, um, con you know, continued democratization of these models. Um, because uh, a lot of people are then, you know, able to use the sort of intuitive interfaces that uh, open AI has built out. But a lot of people are interacting with APIs. There's a lot of us who are capable of interacting with APIs. But this sort of no code trigger automation system that Zapier does um, is super powerful uh, and fantastic. And I'm going to walk through just a couple uh, of these uh, as, as well as a little tutorial on how to set one up um, so that if you want to jump into this, um, that you uh, that you can. Uh, so um, this was covered on a couple of places, uh, inside.com, which has its own sort of no-code piece. Uh, what was cool was they, um, first of all, they thank someone. I didn't know him, but I'm following him now. Uh, looks like he's doing a bunch of uh, great, uh, great stuff in this domain. Uh, and then they basically dropped uh, a little sort of list of some of their most uh, Zapier's most favorite ones that they've done. So this was uh, a folder in Todoist that kicks off a Zapier to ping OpenAI and then prep a draft uh, in email. So a magical to-do list uh, creator. We've also got a GPT-3 um, uh, powered Gmail account, which you can, um, you know, basically it shows a, a person who was then struggling to communicate, but then created a GPT-3 powered uh, Gmail account, which sends a message. Uh, again, very exciting. <laughs> It's also talking about maybe the risks and consequences of it. And then another one, super fascinating, 150 pieces of targeted content that will go on a website in a few hours. So that yeah, combined Airtable, OpenAI, Zapier, and Webflow. And uh, if you are interested in this one in particular, uh, he actually has a video. Uh, make sure that I've got it here for you. Um, there we go. Uh, let's get the actual video. Hey everyone, open. So welcome you have to the this quick tutorial. To, uh, listen to you at this exact moment, but. Uh, hey. Pretty fantastical and a great uh, sort of example of just like the power of this and what this uh, can unleash um, for people who are uh, who are interested in it. Now, uh, a couple other uh, things I think that are interesting before uh, I open this up. I'm going to be selfish in this. I'm going to uh, go with um, one that is a Speak AI uh, and Open AI uh, integration. So I can hop in. I can create a zap. Uh, I'm going to go speak AI. I'm going to use that as a trigger. What's interesting is that OpenAI's current one, and it makes sense, they're not actual triggers. They're only actions. So uh, I'm interested to know what the trigger functions could be with this system. But overall, the uh, you know it makes sense that they're an action uh, in this current state. So I'm going to go say uh, speak uh, transcript to um, OpenAI GPT uh, summary. And I've got this. I'm going to go. Hey, I want a new when a new automated transcription comes. I'm going to choose my uh, account, which I have uh, many of, um, and it'll take a second. Click 
go continue and then now it will actually test that trigger so the, the last sort of file that i did uh which was on something uh probably yeah chat gpt versus google search which was the topic i was pretty hot about i can now go in here and i can say hey i want open ai um and i can say i'm going to uh then send a prompt to open ai which will generate a response now <laughs> there is a way to do this with dali uh, where you can uh, actually do an image uh, I did this test uh, case. Uh, now my featured image, basically I said, hey, take the title of this video that I created and create a featured image that could be used um, for YouTube. The result and uh, result of that, not so great. Uh, there's been lots of sort of notes about the spelling uh, comprehension and um, also that the system is only trained to 2021. I was talking about a recent topic. I just don't think it had any grasp or understanding of what I was talking about. The topic was not enough. And I've also played around with some versions of where the trend, hey, Take, make a video or an image that is representative of this transcript and I've had some pretty wonky outputs. But the actual model from a text um, perspective is much better uh, at um, doing this. So we've, you can see, you can actually choose the model. Um, the text of Inchi 003 is the most up-to-date and most powerful one, almost like a 3.5 as we head to GPT-4. And I'm going to say, uh, give me uh, a bulleted uh, point list summary of um, uh, this uh, of this transcript uh, and I can literally put it in brackets and then I can now go and I can show the options from speak and in this case I have at the bottom here a transcript text which is the entire thing and I can now um, modify a couple pieces here so the maximum uh, so the temperature which means Dave, do you want to take more risk or less risk? Um, higher being more creative or sort of higher risk ones. You can also modify the length, so the, the amount of tokens that you want to use. I'm hoping that, uh, I'm trying to think how long this file is. We're gonna see uh, if this uh, file is short enough for me to be able to do it. And then there's a couple other things that you can change, frequency penalty, presence penalty. Um, there are little descriptions of that that you can then sort of refer to to make sort of fine tune changes um, to the output that then GPT is going to give you. I'm gonna hit continue and then I'm gonna test the action here. I'm gonna see, this looks relatively long. Um, it might fit, uh, I'm gonna take a second here. Uh, there we go. So right away, um, I have the text that has come back from uh, GPT Da Vinci, and I now have a bulleted point list summary of the actual video that I had created. So um, generative AI has taken over and one trending this week is Lenza AI, popular before the magic avatar feature, but now has increased a lot. 22 million downloads, 2 million of them in the last month. Revenue rumored to be 600,000 on December 2nd. So a very good overall summary from a transcript that I had shared with you that in the end was not fully accurate, it was an automated transcript, but uh, I think that um, GPT did a, a pretty incredible job of getting. Um, so now if I want to, I can publish this zap, I can turn this on, and every single time that I publish uh, uh, a file, this could go live. Um, so uh, I'm going to see, you've got that. I can share this, uh, so I will, uh, you know, I will share this. Uh, I'm gonna dump that in as a, a resource um, in Speak if you want to, or on this YouTube video if you want to check this out. And I think that's um, not just it, like I could take that uh, I could take that summary, that bullet point list summary, I could send that somewhere. I could send that to myself in an email. I could send that to my friend in an email. I could push that to my WordPress site as uh, part of the content there um, and an overall summarization of the actual video itself. There's a ton of um, possibilities. I could send those as action items uh, in a Trello card uh, into my account. So the, uh, the vast um, you know, ability that Zapier has to connect with so many different applications just unlocks like, uh, you know, a massive layer of interaction that I think is super, super powerful. And when you incorporate GPT and OpenAI into that, uh, more and more uh, just opens up. So this has been my uh, little tutorial on uh, uh, Zap OpenAI Zapier integration, um, which I think sort of went under the cover, uh, but is a huge, uh, um, you know, innovation in the democracy 
democratization of this technology. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you get some sort of inspiration from it and see how easy it is to set up. If you have any feedback, questions, thoughts, I always love to hear them. And as always, I appreciate you checking this uh, out. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.